Hi, welcome to Banana World. Denzel Washington going head to head with the Views Woke crew that would be pure TV gold and not in a good way for the ladies Denzel with his non-nonsense demeanor and unfiltered opinions would be a wrecking ball to their carefully crafted narratives. Picture it Denzel calmly dismantling their arguments cutting through their virtue signaling like a pro the host used to controlling the narrative would struggle to keep up with his sharp wit and unwavering beliefs. It would be a clash of titans with Denzel exposing the flaws in their progressive views for the view, it would spell disaster, the fallout would be massive audiences questioning their credibility, social media exploding with commentary, and headlines screaming about Denzel's takedown of their agenda. So starters, we have whoopies on how. Systemic racism is what's causing black kids to turn into violence and having less opportunities than their white counterparts. But we have a guy who doesn't believe that there is institutional message. Z, uh, racism. You know, he says, well, I don't believe it's there, but in fact it is, and, but Denzel Washington has a completely different opinion on this in 2017, while promoting his film Roman J. Israel-esque, the award-winning actor explained that playing the social justice warrior didn't incite any ill feelings towards the criminal justice system. Instead, it reminded him of the importance of family values it starts at home, he said at the New York premiere of the film. It starts with how you raise your cock. Hildren, if a young man doesn't have a father figure, he'll go find a father figure as activists push for reform in the system. Washington explained how he doesn't give it too much credit, so, you know, I can't blame the system, he continued, it's unfortunate that we make such easy work for them in a separate interview, Denzel Washington gave some straight talk about race relations in America, focusing on how people interact rather than what laws say, he pointed out, that laws can't force people to like e other race relationships have to do with race relationships. You're white or whatever you are. I'm black or whatever I am. We're standing here talking now. That's how we get things done. You can't legislate love. He highlighted that the key to improving relations isn't something a president can dictate. It's about everyday conversations and understanding between individuals regarding movements like Black Lives Matter. Denzel emphasized the importance of free speech and the right to protest regardless of whether everyone agrees with the cause we live in America, and in America, we have the freedom to express ourselves. We shouldn't take that for granted. So whatever the movements are, whether you agree with them, or don't they have the right to express themselves additionally when it comes to promoting Hollywood projects, Denzel believes that diversity should not be mentioned in 2022. He told NBC BLK at a roundtable with other media outlets, obviously we are diverse. So I think that's a great thing that uh, actor then added, you know, in my humble opinion, we ought to be at a place where diversity shouldn't even be mentioned, like it's something special, he explained these young kids, um, black, white, blue, green, or whatever, are highly talented and qualified, so that's why they're there, here's the thing you gotta remember when you talk about racial and you talk about discrimination, maybe what if he just wasn't good enough? See, it's so easy, easy to just say, oh, it's because of this, it's because of racism, which Lee Washington believes diversity shouldn't even be mentioned like it's something special he does believe in putting God first. In everything he does, the actor prioritizes faith in all areas of his life, including marriage by the grace of God, Washington said when asked how he and his wife Peta have survived marriage in the spotlight, really. I'm not taking credit, he replied. And a great wife, a strong, 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 strong woman, she has done the heavy lifting, she has been the consistent one she has given daily. Religious instruction, she makes breakfast. She took them to school. I was out the lion bringing home the meat. You know, providing he previously opened up about the supernatural moment when he encountered God, I was filled with the Holy Ghost, and it scared me. I said, wait a minute, I didn't want to go. This deep, I want to party Washington, said I went to church with Robert Townsend. And when it came time to come down to the altar, I said, said, you know this time, I'm just going to go down there and give it up. And see what happens, he continued. I went in the prayer room and gave it up and let go and experienced something I've never experienced in my life since that experience he's also brought his faith into his acting career. Through my work, I have spoken to millions of people, he said in 2015. I si said, I am no longer just going to speak through my work, I'm going to make a conscious effort to get up and speak about what God has done for me. According to him, faith isn't merely a passive belief, it demands action. Yoon and activism, he believes everyone possesses unique gifts, and it's the duty of individuals to utilize these gifts to make a positive impact in the world you have to use your gifts. You know faith without works is nothing, however, he also acknowledged that not everyone needed to be an activist in the 
traditional sense, Denzel recalled a prophetic message from a woman who foresaw his global influence, not, not as a preacher in the pulpit, but as a speaker through his work, this revelation inspired him tight. Oh, use his platform in the entertainment industry to spread messages of hope, love, and faith. When Denzel questioned his pastor about his purpose, wondering if he was meant to become a preacher, the response was profound, you already have a pulpit. These words served as a powerful reminder that Denzel's influence and reach extended far beyond the confines of a church, permeating the hearts and minds of audiences worldwide. With humility and determination, he embraced his role as an agent for good recognizes. In the profound impact storytelling could have on shaping perspectives and inspiring change, meanwhile, Whoopi Goldberg, who claims to have an understanding of Christianity in the Bible, has made some pretty controversial claims and references to the religion that God made me smart enough to know that if there are alternatives out there that can work for me, I will investigate them, God said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I will not make that decision for anybody, I don't ever think. That I can make any decision for you and your family, in any case, Denzel Washington is not the only celebrity who would have a hard time on The View. Morgan Freeman came on The View to talk about his Netflix series. But shockingly, the AS celebrity only had the interview for six minutes. During the conversation, Sonny Holon suggested she wanted to talk about Freeman's 761st Tank Battalion documentary. I, 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 I want to ask you about a different document. Go ahead. Um, as some politicians around the country. I try to erase black history, you're making sure people don't forget vital parts of our past, including this documentary. This suggestion by Hostin allegedly shocked the show's producers in the back, and we're gonna start to get a little bit worried about what Morgan Freeman could possibly say you. See The View is known for presenting a distinct ideological viewpoint to its audience, aiming for not only engagement, but also agreement. The last thing the producers wanted was for Freeman to voice opinions. Once contrary to their own disrupting the established harmony of their messaging, the particular concern arose from the fact that Freeman, as a black American, had the potential to challenge the show's stance, particularly on matters related to black history in this scenario, Mario having a black. American voice dissenting views posed a unique challenge for the view the fear was that if Freeman were to elaborate on his perspective, he might unveil uncomfortable truths that contradicted the prevailing name. Rate of, the producers were keenly aware that Freeman, given his stature and past statements, had the ability to share insights that the show might prefer to keep under wraps. In any case, Morgan Freeman does not ride the woke train when it comes to this topic Black History Month in a candid interview. About race relations in the US, Freeman told the UK Sunday Times that Black History Month is an insult, you're going to relegate my history to a month. Oh, come on, what do you do with yours what which month? Is White History Month no? Come on, tell me the Oscar award-winning actor went on to say he doesn't like being called African-American because the label is inaccurate. I don't subscribe to that title. Freeman said black people have had different titles all the way back to the onward, and I do not know. How these things get such a grip, but everyone uses African-American, he continued. What does it really mean most black people in this part of the world are mongrels, and you say Africa as if it's a country? When it's a continent like Europe, he compared the term to others like Irish Amaran or Italian American, which denote a country of origin Freeman said he instead prefers the term black. He said he agreed with the actor Denzel Washington's iconic quote about being being very proud to be black but black. Is not all I am. I'm in total agreement. Freeman concurred. You can't define me. That way this is not the first time Freeman has voiced upset about the term African American in 2012. He told The Guardian he preferred black as a classification because black is beautiful one syllable versus seven in the Sunday Times interview. Freeman also briefly opened up about his iconic film career, which began amid the American civil rights movement. He said he owes his success to courage, luck, and a changing political and social landscape in the U.S. Freeman claimed there were little to no black actors in movies during his youth until Sidney Poitier, the first black actor to win an Academy Award, began to pave the way this violation of undeniable truths that resonated with a segment of the audience. In any case, the actor also talked about his Netflix docuseries Life on Our Planet. Morgan Freeman looked the view co-host dead in the eye and told them the apocalypse is, is coming. I am one of those people who's very interested in this subject. Life on the planet, you understand that today, life on the planet is in a little bit of trouble, and we're the cause of it. He said referencing climate change, there have been, if I remember, 
fair correctly six extinction level events on the planet since life began six times large large portions of life not human life we're talking just life gone destroyed we're headed for another one scientists have said if we don't hurry up and change our ways there is going to be a cataclysmic event that will wipe many of us off the face of the earth freeman followed his remarks with a message of hope however for one entity survival amid humanity's suspected doom, how far back does life exist on this? Planet and why does it still exist? He asked it's because life is tenacious life, we're not talking about human beings here. We're talking about the planet, she'll stay a clearly disturbed Bihar observe that the planet will be tenacious if leave it alone and enact change to curve the climate crisis. The human interruption of all of that is causing all of the problems, she said I hope it's not too late. This discussion was cut shot when Whoopi was signaled by the show producers to end the show I had a quad. Estion, but that we run out of time. Listen, this is extraordinary. This document, while it appeared that Morgan was all right with ending his time on The View, earlier than perhaps expected longtime viewers, didn't agree. What's more, they proceeded to bombard the show online to voice how they shouldn't. Have allowed the segment to end so abruptly one fan commented, they have all the time in the world to let Joy ramble on with her hate-filled diatribes, but not enough time to let a great upstanding man. Like Morgan Freeman speak a second fan, added, y'all need to invite this legend back, uh, a p six minutes is not nearly long enough, he deserves at least half an episode, while a third fan added what the F is going on, with this show they have one of the most talented and iconic actors of our time, and... They only give him a five-minute segment and cut him off after five minutes. Yet they have plenty of segments with Kardashians or some other zealous reality star that nobody cares about, and they give them segments that are 10-15 minutes long in any case. One year ago, The View also endured its own mini-apocalyptic event of its own when protesters crashed Senator Ted Cruz's live interview on the show to criticize its parent network, a BCC's coverage of the music environment in inflation in the United States has one cause, and one cause only, and that is when the federal government we do cover climate here, guys, conservative panelist Alyssa Farah, Griffin said after a group of people stood up in the audience to show. Odette Cruz and the co-hosts, Whoopi then interjected the protesters saying, ladies, ladies, excuse us, let us do our job. Let us do our job, we hear what you have to say, but you gotta go now. Many people believe that the show cut Morgan Freeman short because they did not want a repeat of this incident. However, some all leg that there is a more sinister reason for cutting short the interview apparently the View producers were afraid of Morgan opening up a discussion that is contrary to the agenda being put. Shed by Hollywood elites, in fact these elites are allegedly so by Freeman that they have allegedly tried to frame him you see in the intricate tapestry of Hollywood Morgan Freeman, the iconic actor whose career has spanned decades found himself entangled in a web of controversies that some fervent Fans believed was a deliberate attempt by the industry to frame him for context and attorney, for the man who allegedly and Morgan Freeman's step-granddaughter, Adina Hines, reportedly claimed in court that 